Hello and welcome to the Ben Tablet Show for today, December 28. Yeah, please let me know if everything works fine. There were some technical problems yeah, in my show four days ago, but I think they are solved. So just um, give me a quick feedback in one of the chats if everything is working fine. So let's get a game started. I have to abort the game against Casper, who trolled me with A3. Yeah, this is um, kind of weird yeah <laughs> last time we played h4 yeah is there some kind of is casper the the troll bot yeah maybe <laughs> okay so let's see if is anybody new here bishop 23 is a new opponent where is he here right so let's start um i have to say one thing before we um uh, before i forget this is um a show that was scheduled like two weeks ago uh, for 12 and I started like one minute early and uh, somehow I just re I recognized like a couple of minutes ago that there is a Bantablet show scheduled in one hour by um, Grandmaster, I cannot pronounce his name, I'm so sorry, Vidit Gurati, one of the top Indian players and it's, it's at one, right? So in one hour my um, stream was planned to be quite... Um, quite short anyway I, I i went i wanted to do one hour but still so vidit will be on in one hour in on exactly this channel if we're talking about um twitch or youtube so i'll make sure that um i'll stop the show on time and uh, then you can enjoy vidit spent a blitz starting at one central european time so um let's see I'll be, I'll be um, stopping this show um, a little bit before 1 Central European time, so there should not be a problem there. Okay, now, this is a position out of a Rossolimo Sicilian, which is a very um, well-respected line for white. He could have played a5 already. I'm going to stop this. It's not, this is not the kind of position where you are, let's say, very worried with black, that you're kind of, yeah, killed quickly, but white's position is very solid. They can always try for little things on the pawn structure. Yeah, here he's, um, yeah, looking at the b6 pawn. I always have rook b8 to cover that. So I'm just going to, Say, you know, you've got nobody on the king side. I'm going to start an attack there. Maybe he wants to play knight e3 to f5. This is possible. Aha, he's getting back with the queen. But I'm going to just try to open the position there with g4. And I have an open h file now. I have an open h file. This is good. Let me see, rook h8. I have an open h file is similar to back in the classic movie Die Hard, yeah, with Bruce Willis stuck in that skyscraper and then at one point he snatches a an automatic rifle from one of the bad guys and then he says, I've got a machine gun now or something like that. <laughs> This is the H file here in this position. Okay, so I'm going to take and here, what's now? Rook H1 mate. He has to play F3, yeah? more or less. This doesn't look very nice for white. But is it winning for, for me? I don't know. I currently don't see a win after that. It's probably just my tactical blindness. He has to play f3 anyway. What is the point here? Yeah, so f3. And now, uh, is there a way to kill white here? Rook h2, he can take on g4 with the queen. Getting... I didn't have a mate in one. Oh, rook h1 mate. I could have played rook h1 mate, really? 
Oh, that's true. <laughs> okay. So let's think about this. This is probably why he thought about it. I'm not really, not really um, in playing mode yet. <laughs> Rook H1 mate would have been strong. Okay. Anyway, let's get, uh, let's continue the game. Yeah, it's it's always better to play a mate in one. This is really not rocket science. If you can checkmate the guy, do that. <laughs> Uh, okay. Anyway, I, I have a strong attack, so it's not a, it's not like um, it's it's a big problem. But the game, um, yeah, would have been over, and this is preferable. Now I still have to win with the, with the queen up, and oh, no, he allows another checkmate. So uh, at the end of the day, it's rook h1 mate. That was odd. <laughs> Yeah, I was so busy telling my John McLean story that uh, I didn't see a made in one, which you really should do. Batman is challenging me. I think I've played him before, but only once. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, Rook H1 made. Yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, you should see that. <laughs> anyway, so let's see what Batman is doing here. All right, so this is a interesting line. Let's see how he takes. Queen takes, <clears throat> this can be very sharp. Queen h5, g4 is an interesting variation. Let's see where he goes with the queen. Okay, so g4, black cannot take due to rook g1 and has to move the queen again. Um, yeah, here there are couple of things. Rook g1 is interesting. Knight e5 I think is also a good move, but rook g1 I'm going to play. Now his queen is short of squares. Yeah, thanks for the game Bishop 23. I should, I should have played the maid. But uh, anyway, so now black has to worry about uh, a queen on h3. Doesn't have many squares. Okay, this one. That's interesting. He just stops this rook g3 idea. Knight g5, he can take on h2 with the queen. After queen takes g4, I have rook g1, and it's really awful on g7. I'm going to play queen e2, not sure that this is best, but need to make a decision. I want to castle queen side, and maybe knight g5 then. Going to be dangerous. Yeah, probably knight c6, a move like that. I don't know. b5, okay. Yeah. If I take bishop g7 is the idea. Bishop b7, I'm sorry, is the idea. Mm, yeah. I think bishop d3 is probably the stronger move with the idea to play knight g5. Bishop b7, knight g5, queen h2, bishop takes h7, check, king h8, and a castle queen side. That looks horrible for black. I hope I'm not missing something simple. <laughs> if I miss a mate in one, things uh, could be tricky here. So queen takes h2. Otherwise, I'll just take h7 with uh, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, and now this this looks very, very dangerous for black. I don't um, yet threaten rook h1 because he has the bishop on b7 covering this square. But I'm definitely um, 
going to threaten it soon. Yeah, here bishop e4 is, is a simple way to play, I think. Simpler yet strong. b7 is hanging and, I mean, rook h1. It was not the only way to win, probably, but bishop e4 is, uh, I think, strong. Yeah, this queen d5, h5 is extremely risky for black, but it is still... I've had this on the board a lot, actually. So queen d3, I thought. Rook h1 is also winning, I think, but queen d3 is, is easy. This attacks. The rook on a8 is simply hanging. And rook h1 is a deadly threat as well. So thanks for the game, Batman 2017. Okay. Um, there was a, just one thing. There was a question in the chat why black couldn't take. If he takes on g4, I have rook g1. And then you see bishop on g7 and the rook on g7. This is, um, yeah, killing on that square. The king is, uh, yeah, basically checkmated. Okay, um, let's go. Who else is challenging me? Xin Voka is a new opponent. Let's do that. He wanted white. And he's got white. So let's see what he's doing. Mm, now he's not moving. That's not good. Okay, going to abort that one. We have don't have that much time today, so I want to. Um, uh, that is an um, that is a non-premium. Yeah, you need to get a premium account on Chess Twenty Four to play me. Anybody new there? Let me check. Mister Nidorf, I think I played him recently. Ryan Shah, is that a new guy? No. Uh, anyway, let's play. Come on. So let's go, knight f3. And e3, that's how I do it with c4. We could get the same line as in the game before. No, doesn't look like it. Let's see what Ryan Rian Shah is up to. d4 is possible now for black, which leads to Shah play potentially. No, equals e6. And we transpose into something like a tarash let's see uh, this one c4 that is a very ambitious move actually as this pawn is not well supported i think i'm going to attack the pawn with b3 okay black has no development i'm kind of skeptical about this Queen a4 maybe. Yeah. C4 is, is pretty weak and c6 is hanging. Okay, I think knight c3 looks good here. Yeah. Knight e5. Just attack c6. And bishop to d7. Yeah, I can just win the c4 pawn. Um, not certain if this is best. Uh, number of good options. No, yeah, okay, I'm going to take the pawn. That's probably not even the best, as I said. But it's always tempting uh, to have a pawn. The materialist attitude yeah just it's uh it's tempting to have material it's, it's so easy to grasp <laughs> you can count a pawn hey, ah, give me the pawn but sometimes it's not the best way to play okay so captured here probably no i thought knight d5 maybe but okay i can check on d6 play knight b6 hmm not sure about this this is also not a bad move. It 
to attack the pawn. I would like to get a bishop before in to stop his kingside castling. Yeah, there's a question in the chat uh, about the high draw percentage of the current um, air things. I cannot get that right. Sorry about that. The the current tournament in the in the um, in the what is that quarter? I'm I'm terrible about that. The champions chess tour. Is that right? What is, what is the correct name of the tournament? I always call it the Magnus tournament, which is not a, not a right, right term. Yeah, the, um, the draw rate is extremely high. I think um, the format is not uh, so great uh, with such a large percentage of players qualifying when basically air things masters. Yeah. Um, when roughly 50% uh, of the points will net you qualification, it kind of um, it incentivizes a safe play in a way. I can take that knight. Yeah, I should have done that <laughs> the move before. But okay, he couldn't really do much about it. Thanks for the game, Ryan Sean. I think you should definitely not go c4. This is just too slow in development. Just play bishop d6 here, for example, or take on d4. This is fine. Okay, um, yeah, I think um, the, the the regulation, like the rules of that tournament are not really um, the best. Like um, if you can qualify with playing draws all the time, it makes this very tempting. I yeah? play many draws, in particular, if you somehow, let's say, in, in round one or two, let's say you win a game, then you know that if you draw the rest or play very safely, even with a loss, you might qualify for the knockout stage. And this is not so great. Yeah, they should probably um, do this differently. I don't have a very clear suggestion. I'm not so good with formats, but if you um, maybe have less qualification spots. I think they had a, they had a tournament which um, had 16 players, if I'm not mistaken, and half of them qualified, like eight out of 16. And that was much, much more, um, much more uh, interesting, more exciting. And um, this time I think they have 12 players and eight qualify. That means that if you get 50%, you're in. And mm, yeah, probably this is one thing that could be improved there. But well, it's a learning uh, process, right? The players are clever. They <laughs> they know what they what they need to do. Yeah, so we have a um, a closed uh, or a closed type of Sicilian out of a Rossolimo. And uh, I'm quite happy with this position with the C5 and E5 pawns, the so-called Botvinnik pawn structure. I've played this a lot. And um, I like the chances that black often gets with F5. I'm preparing F5 with King H7 trying to get an attack on the king side. Leobu is playing well. Okay, uh, the drunken lawyer says he was very much impressed by Magnus' endgame against Dubov yesterday. I honestly didn't see the game. I'm, I'm totally um, busy <laughs> doing my own things. And I didn't see the game. I was on um, I was on the air yesterday, a bit together with Simon Williams, uh, Ginger GM. But that was starting. That was the second round of the day for about an hour, and that was uh, already after Magnus had played against Dubov. 
So, okay, I'm going to sacrifice the exchange here and see how white is handling this. This is an interesting way to play. I tried to win the f3 pawn <clears throat> and play um, against a somewhat weakened king. b4 is a strong move, actually. He tries to open the position. I'm going to jump to d4, threatening knight f3. If he takes, I take with the e pawn, and that would <clears throat> open up my bishop here for bishop e5. Oh, that is a mistake. I can't take that one. What? <laughs> what exactly? I don't really understand some comments. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see if I can get this attack rolling, uh, attacking f3 here. So he covers f3, and now I have more than one good move. Queen f4 looks good for the almost made threat on h2, but this is also strong. Okay, so let's take f3 and and mate. Okay, thanks for the game. Leobu. It's new on the side, so I, I tend to play against uh, new players. John Tadros is also relatively new. I played him only once before. Let's let's start. And let's see what John is doing against knight f3. So just to remind you, um, there is a Bantablitz show coming in 40 minutes with Vidit and I'm going to not block the channel, so I'm going to make this a little bit shorter than originally intended. Okay, John is going into a queen's gambit with the knight on c6. That doesn't mean that it is so bad, it's just a little bit unusual. Let's see how he handles the pressure against d5. Now I'm threatening to take on f6. Yeah, this is a good one playing in the style of the Rogozin. There's a question in the YouTube chat, how was, how was Christmas? Yeah, thanks for asking. Quiet, yeah? <laughs> Christmas is usually more, more of a quiet time of year, but um, well, this time when you, you cannot even travel and so on, it's even, um, it's even more quiet or was even more quiet. Okay, let's go g4 and knight e5. That's, uh, I think, a little bit annoying for black. The pin here on f6. He cannot take on e5. And he maybe has to worry about h4. Okay, so this is interesting. He's unpinning. Okay, maybe I'll take here and play bishop f4. Yeah, I'm following the chat here and uh, there's some discussion about later shows. Yeah, and it's a Monday, right? I'm completely out of the out of the loop, yeah, <laughs> because of Christmas, yeah, you kind of, at least in, in my case, I'm losing track a little bit, what kind of weekday it is, it is definitely Monday, absolutely. So, attacking b7, how does he cover it? Rook b8, I don't know. I could play some counter attack with queen e4, but I have rook g1, bishop g2 next. It's um, not quite clear to me. He can take g4. I mean, no, this is a, a pin here. 
but b7 is just um, something that he has to somehow uh, attend to. Okay, he didn't. Okay, I can't take here, right? Is there a huge problem with that? I don't see it. And now, okay, I can take c7. The only thing that worries me a little bit is possibly queen a3. I like this move here because this is more or less forcing the queen trade. Queen e4, okay, but I have rook g1 and that doesn't really irritate me a lot. The knight on a5 is completely offside. I think he, yeah, he has to take. And then after the queen trade, everything looks uh, very nicely sorted. Covering b4. Yeah, I'm just a pawn up and I have two bishops against two knights. That looks very good. Okay, so multiple options. Bishop a6 maybe? Or rook c1. It really looks pretty nice. Yeah, bishop a6. The rook is actually running short of squares here. Also bishop d6. No, don't need to rush things. Rook f e8, bishop c7. He still has rook d7, so I'm not winning the rook yet or the exchange. Um, f3? Yeah, why not? Maybe knight d6, or what is the idea? I will just pile up on the c pawn. I think for tournaments like this, um, the Air Things Masters, um, the, the knockout stage is always the exciting one. So we can um, definitely look forward to the, to the knockouts. Yeah, I, I think I'll just take it. And enter c7. So, bishop e5 or rook c1. Um, this, this looks a little bit stronger. <clears throat> Threatening on g7 first. This one. There's a question in the YouTube chat if I'm linked with teaching profession. So if I if I do offer lessons, probably um, I currently don't. I'm I'm um, I'm currently completely focused on uh, producing chess content for for the Chessable platform. This is also what you see in the stream icon that on sale picture on the. On the top, it shows that currently there's a Christmas related sale going on on Chessable. And this is a, an icon or thumbnail for one of my courses. And uh, I'm a full time author at the moment. Yeah, this looks pretty nice. I'm up tons of pawns. Yeah, currently um, there is a sale going on, the Christmas sale. So if you want to get um, one or more of my courses, um, it's a good time to do that. They are heavily discounted. And uh, the sale is still going on for uh, some days. Uh, I'm a little bit sloppy here, honestly, in this ending. It's It's so... There's so many ways to win. I'm probably not finding 
the best one. King e5, f4 is more or less a checkmate. Let's go here. I have lots of time. Ah, yeah, okay. There's a mention in the Twitch chat that uh, Pizza Racer got one of my courses. Yeah, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, there's a question if I have an opinion um, about um, how to reassess your chess by Jeremy Silman. I actually don't have one because I don't have the book. Um, I think um, th there are many people who like it, so it's, um, I, I say, probably good because the, the absolute majority of people that I've um, heard talk about it like the book, but um, I, am, I have no personal experience, so not really, I cannot really give you my own opinion there. Um, okay, thanks for the game, John Tadros. There's a question in YouTube, am I, if I'm a grandmaster, I'm not, I'm an international master, that is the title, let's say, uh, below grandmaster, if you had yeah, this title hierarchy, there are a couple of, there are many titles, candidate master, feeder master, international master, and grandmaster, and grandmaster is the highest one, is a new one? Okay, let's play, it's the highest title that you can earn from the world. Uh, chess federation and international master is the step below that one so i would need to improve a little bit to get to that gm level but um currently i'm not going for that i'm more focused on creating chess content and things like that okay so he's going for the Mora Gambit. I'm not going to take the pawn. It's not a bad line, of course, to take the pawn, but I just want to have a good development here and keep it simple, so to say. Yeah, world champion is um, is technically speaking the highest title, but it's a little bit different because the world champion uh, title Let's go here. The world champion title is um, yeah is earned in a title match, and it's it's a bit it's a bit different. Let's say um, in um, in comparison, those um, GM IM they are maybe more comparable to to a degree. Let's say yeah, like the world champion title is really kind of similar to a title that you would earn in other sports, like the world champion of I don't know some discipline in track and field or, or swimming or something like that or um, yeah or other uh, typical sports while the titles um, in chess like grandmaster international master they are more comparable to a degree like you get a um, let's keep the bishop you you earn a degree by um, completing studies and things like that and in chess you have to um, you have to um, yeah, complete these title norms and get your rating up to a certain level and so on. It's, it's kind of comparable to, to a degree, like a, a PhD or something like that. I have to I have a weird way that my, my windows are... Uh, interesting. There's an interesting question here by Power of Knights. He he'd like to he'd like to have an explanation. What what it what does it mean to um, be a positional player? He heard he heard this expression, and um, this is um, not 
so easily explained, but I'll try. I don't really like the expression positional player because that doesn't really tell you much. What exactly does that mean? I prefer um, the term strategic player in a way. Um, and it kind of tells you that a player who is more associated with this term, positional player, strategic player, that they probably value um, yeah, long-term factors in chess more than short-term consideration. Yeah, something like, let's say, having the bishop pair would be something that a strategist, strategic player would appreciate maybe more than a tactical player or, or a tactically focused player. Or something like, um, let's say, having a good sound pawn structure is also something that a strategically focused player would value more than a player who's more um, focused on on, on short-term operations like starting an attack this is um, a little bit a little bit different still um, people are rarely just one trick ponies just like they're just strategic just tactical this is really not happening but they are definitely um, yeah there are the tendencies right I tend to value those strategic considerations more so I would fit more into that strategic um, yeah, category. But you have to see tactics as well. I, I saw that one. I can take the pawn. Queen takes bishop c5, wins the queen. Mm. There's a question. Can someone earn um, a chess title like Grandmaster or I am with a parallel profession? Um, sure. Sure. Let me think about this for a moment. Um, a couple of options. I have earned my, my titles um, while working full time and most people do. I mean, the amount of or the count of, of pure chess professionals is not so high. Most people um, are not chess professionals and let me just attack the rook here, I don't know. He's attacking f7 here. It's a little bit loose this move but I don't see anything. Yeah, you should definitely um, be able to, to, to do both things. Yeah, consider those short short term um, um, yeah, short term factors like uh, dynamics and attack, something that is uh, materializing by tactical means and also long term considerations. You need to be be good at both, but it's a matter of um, preference sometimes and often um, related to opening choices. There are some openings that really don't um, work all that well by strategic considerations only because you... He's just letting the clock run down, I think. No, now he resigns. Okay, yeah, why this um, material down? It has no real compensation. Um, some openings don't really... Um, work all that well if you um, don't consider strategy all that all that much. For example, if you play an opening like the modern Benoni, for example, with black, um, it is it is strategically dubious. I mean, nobody would really, I think, um, yeah, argue about that, but you have dynamic possibilities with this opening and you need to make use of those dynamic factors that you have. And 
this is uh, uh, the thing. Your opening choice is often very um, influential in that way. Okay, I should remember what I'm playing against this line. I think play a four. I've forgotten my line there. B3 or take, I'm both probably good. Okay. Maybe I should have played H3. Okay. Yeah, this is a fairly solid position for black. He has traded his light squared bishop. And... Um, therefore doesn't have a bad piece. Okay, I'm going to change the pawn structure a bit. I could take with the knight. I shouldn't pre-move before. <laughs> so okay, go back. Maybe he's preparing c5. I'm a little bit unsure about that. I don't think so. Uh, d5 is too weak. It's going to cover b7 here, I think. Interesting. I have this op option now. Knight a4, b6. Okay, he will stop knight b6, just not dropping an exchange. Oh, really? That looks like a strange move. Knight d5? Definitely works. Yeah, I just have to take that. Yeah, both captures, I think, are a large advantage. This is maybe simpler. The problem at the end of this line is that always b7 is hanging with a, a big... It's a, it's a skewer, right? On the rook. <laughs> yeah, so he avoided that one what now he's trying to take on d4 maybe this move still threatening bishop takes b7 and removing the rook from the influence of the bishop that looks good so bishop takes b7 attacking the knight and now my a pawn is going to be very dangerous. It's also nicely supported by um, by the bishops. Now a7 is the threat. Just promoting, basically. Um, Ha, huh, that is true. Okay. Let's play like that. I rook a1. Oh my sh oh my god. I have king I can play the king though. So let's do this. Ah blundered f2. That was not exactly necessary. <laughs> I have no time, that's a problem. Ah, no, it's stalemate. 
<laughs> okay, I only had seven seconds, yeah. Okay, a anything else wins, of course. <laughs> King, I just um, have to avoid the stalemate. Anyway, okay. I was pretty okay. I th I'm, I'm happy with the game, but I should avoid the stalemate. Anyway, so I, I want to play one more game and then clear the channel so that Vidit is... Uh, they were not colliding, let's say. Let's play against Pavel. It's a three minute game, so we can get this in nicely. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the game, Yup, by the way. It's not A is around. Okay. Yeah, get him. Let's see what he's playing. He can still play a Grunfeld with D5 or play with D6. Some options here. So we get a King's Indian with Knight C6. Yeah, playing one of the main lines here. Knight c6, a6. I'm going to take. No, black. Yeah, it captures with the knight. This is a well known theoretical line. Bishop d7. Bishop d7, okay. I can go knight d5. Yeah, a couple of options here. Knight d5 is a, is a good simple move. Yeah, black will probably take on d5. That's tough to say what a feeder 2000 um, rating translates to here on chess 24. I, I don't really know. My rating here is also, it's not super high um, compared to other players on the side. I'm not playing not playing that often and my score here in the Bento Blitzes is honestly not that great. So I think it could be higher. I've been close to 3000 on that side. But it's actually a little bit difficult to at least in my in my mind to um, for me to get higher uh, here on the rating ladder because I am in the band tablet shows I play a lot against lower rated players simply because I feel that everybody should have a, a chance to play and um, it's difficult to in, in, at least I think to increase increase the rating that way because you have um, you have uh, many like I have to score one hundred percent basically to not lose rating and I don't manage <laughs> simply I drop the odd draw and I lose games here and there and that is just costing okay here against Pavel I played in a very I was like a little bit of a minimalist approach, but I have a very small advantage in this ending because of my better bishop. His bishop is somewhat stuck on b7. It's not uh, the end of the world for black, but I have um, slightly better chances. And he's a little bit, he's a little bit slow.
that's good b6 a5 is a good way to play yeah do we trade the bishops probably not that's just going to be a draw now nah, i played this in true grandpa style i'm not a grandpa but i played like that <laughs> trading far too much he's probably losing on time but uh, i can go try to go with the king to d4 he's got some pawns on light squares with the, which is giving me some hope but the game will not be decided by position but by time so i'm a little bit better here because d5 is weak i've got more space but probably should be a draw but he just played far too slowly for a three minute game i hope you enjoyed the show it's going to be the end now because i want to make sure that the show after that by grandmaster we did he's a much stronger player than i am i hope you will enjoy his show um this is going to start in about 10 minutes and um it will be on youtube and on twitch if you're watching that also on facebook i guess so wherever you are he should stream on the same channels and it's going to be on in roughly 10 minutes um i will be again online with the stream uh, in two days in german um, language um, and uh, then again in english on i think on new year's right in january 1st thanks a lot for watching bye bye